Your groom is a very lucky man. You're the most stunning bride I've ever seen. Adam, get out. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. No, you can't. Well, see the dress before the wedding? No, 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 no. That's the groom. I'm just the man you love. You know, you and Dixie are beginning to worry me. Hmm? All this talk about Tad can't be healthy for you. Well, I don't know. Is it, is it more healthy to pretend we've forgotten him? Well, you struggle so hard to accept his death. I'm just wondering if, if perhaps you oh, just no, should... Oh, no, not, hmm? not now. Look at here. We made a whole plate of fruit and raisins and a little yogurt. Oh, good. All my favorites. That Can't wait to looks, taste them. We look oh, like we right. got a real good. California uh, style uh, uh, shit uh, uh, here. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Yeah. Since when Those did you bananas. turn into a fruit? Hi. Hey. You okay? Sure, yeah. Look who's here. Oh, wow. That, that's great. Yeah. Well, I better go then. I'll see you later. Oh, no, no, wait, Brian. No, no we can't fuck the judge. I mean, if the kid's here, I gotta go. Right, but wait just a second, please. I have to tell you about Tad. Oh, thank God. What? Are you all right? The doctor said something? Uh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, what's fine? I'm getting a nurse. Don't you dare move. Oh, I have something so important to tell you. I know. I know about your girl. Oh, Baby, just lie back, relax. You've been thinking about the girl? Your girl, the you're one you remember. You're supposed to be sitting there fixating about this. You're supposed to relax. You're supposed to get better. You're not supposed to be subsisting about my love life. No. Mother, mother, if I'd known you were going to do this, I would never have told you in the first place. Darling, be quiet. Let me tell now, you. I know what you're going to tell me. Don't give up on trying to find no. her. I won't. No. I promise. No, 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 no. Listen, message received and noted, okay? You okay? I would be if I could just get a word in edgewise. Mother, mother, listen to me. I'm serious. You have to be calm. But darling, be quiet. Let me tell listen, you. Listen, she's been pretty stressed out trying to reach no you. No kidding. What the hell is going on here? Oh, let me tell you. You have to listen to me. children. Brought to you by Wheaties Honey Gold. Want to hit your sweet spot? Hit it with a sweet shot. Wheaties Honey Gold. Adam, get out. Before I tell you how magnificent you are, I thought you would be lovely in this dress. I was wrong. Well, I don't care what you think. You're more than lovely. You're an exquisite work of art. Fine. Now leave. Not that I'm surprised. Well, you're a vision in the nurse's uniform. So in a dress this superb, how could you be in anything less than sublime? Fifteen minutes ago, I told you to get off these premises. I had to have a talk with my future sister-in-law. According to the law, you are an intruder. And I've got the right to get a shotgun and you... Shoot it. me, shoot the man who picked this dress. That would be impolite, say the very least, not to mention messy. Besides, Gloria wants to talk to you. It's okay, I can handle that. What about the feeling? Can we do it a little later? Anything you say. You just missed your last chance to escape. Don't bet on it. One blast from a little shotgun, you could have been rid of me forever. She doesn't own a gun. <laughs> well, perhaps you could have hired some burly neighbor to come in and throw me out with the scruff of my neck. Why did you not let her? Why cause a scene? You're not that important. That's good. <laughs> you are fast on your feet. Yes, but not fast enough to lose you. No, you don't want to lose me. It's a father's thought from your mind. I'm the only man you've ever met who is capable of appreciating. Stuart appreciates me. Oh, but I appreciate all of you. Every delightful contradiction, all the lights 
and the shadows and the good and the bad, Stuart sees half of it. I embrace all of it. Nothing is ever going to happen between us, Adam. And when are you going to finally be honest? You're going to wait till they strike up the wedding march? You want me to be honest? I'll be honest. I'm attracted to you. I'm yours for the taking, you deceit. But it's Stuart I want. You didn't just dismiss your chaperone so you could tell me that again. You wanted to be alone with me. Stuart and I are going to have a wonderful life together. Now quit hounding me, accept it, and get out. You don't want me to get out. You want me to carry you away into a glittering world of crystal chandeliers and candle-lit ballrooms. You're wrong. You want to make grand entrances into lavish rooms filled with adoring, admiring fans. Stop it, Adam. I'm so right, it hurts. I have a direct line into what you want. You have a direct line into what I covet. This, this is what I want. This is the life that Stuart wants for us. Look real close at him, because if it's not in this painting, I don't want it. You didn't see Tad again. No, I didn't. You'll be happy to know this, that you are not dealing with a crazy person. I thought I saw Tad, but I didn't. Brian! Hey, hey. bud! Come here. Uh. You come here to play with me? Oh, boy, I sure would love to, but I, I can't this time. I'm in a monster rush. Brian has to go, sweetie. I'm sorry. Why don't you want to play with me anymore? Uh. Uh, well, I do, Squirt. I do. I mean, I have big fun with my best bud. You know that. But one of the bad things about being a grown-up is that you have to do a lot of things that are no fun. And they take up a lot of your time. Yeah, you and anyway, I mean? it isn't a playtime right now. Anyway, it's snack time. Yeah, I want you another want great starving. big helping of that yogurt. Come on, let's go ahead that yogurt. I have to get out of here. Look, Brian, just first let me tell you... Can it just wait until later, No, no, please? no, no, really. You'll be very glad to know this, that you... I'm not, I'm not losing my mind. I never thought you were. Oh, come on. I'm seeing Tad. I mean, come on. You must have had your doubts. No. no. Dixie, stress makes people think a lot of things, and you're dealing with a ton of it, so... <laughs> what I'm dealing with is a look-alike. Come again? Do you remember how... No, wait. I had left a photo album on the coffee table, and Opal was looking at it, and there was a picture of, of, of me and Tad and Junior. So Tad... So Junior sees this picture, and he points to the picture, Tad, and he goes, that's him. So... Anyway, no, no. Do, you, do you remember when Junior wandered off in the park? Okay, he, sh he was sure that it was Tad who found him in the park. So? So we know who found him in the park. It was, it was Mrs. Orsini's son, Ted. So you, <laughs> oh, you, you think maybe... No, 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 I know. I know this for sure. I mean, here, I'm thinking I'm seeing Tad and it, Mr. Orsini had dropped his wallet there. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, so, oh, okay, so he went to look for it. And I saw him. <laughs> this whole thing was just a total coincidence. <laughs> Mr. Orsini just happens to look a lot like Tad. This is important. Mother, Mother, I'm sure it is, but you've got to cool down. Now. Look, whatever she has to say, you better let her tell her. Fine, she can lecture me senseless just as soon as we get the little blips under control. I can't wait. Mother, Mother, listen to me. It can't, it's got to wait, okay? You are going to be fine. You have plenty of time. No, no, listen, you Mother, have to know. Mother, just, 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 just don't talk till we get a nurse in here, okay? And the girl. And get her, quick. You remember. Hurry! You have to hear don't this. Shh. Don't talk, don't talk. <laughs> Sodium bicarb IV push. 
Clear. Okay, we converted her. Somebody take a blood gas and read me a BP. She's back in normal sinus rhythm. Of mistaken identity. I mean, how simple can you get? You're not off your gourd. This gourd is completely intact. That's right. Thank you, Doctor. What do we... What do we do about Junior? Well, I am just going to have to find a way to make sure that he knows that you love him without making him feel like you're rejecting him. Are you going to tell him the truth? That it's against the rules for you to see him? I don't know. Do you think I should? Well, if you want to keep it secret from Adam. I don't like to weigh Junior down with a whole lot of secrets. I could tell Adam. <laughs> yeah, and you could also dive in front of a truck. Oh, please, come on. I mean, it was just a total accident. I mean, yeah. how were you supposed to know that Junior was here? Yeah, well, you know, any normal person would know that and understand that, but... Right, that... but when I'm dealing with Adam, he's not a normal person. Every time I treat him like a normal person, I end up feeling like a total idiot. My advice, don't. Don't tell him. You're right. I'm just going to have to figure out some way, without bringing up this court stuff, of making Junior feel like he can just be quiet about it, right? Do you think you can figure out some way to let him know how much I miss him? I'll give it a shot. Would it be all right if I said goodbye? I think he'd be crushed if he did. Junior, come give me a big hug for the road. Uh, yeah. ah, oh, huge hug. When are you going to play soccer with me again? Oh, as soon as I can. I promise, as soon as I can. I'll get it. We haven't done it this way. Ooh, I've been waiting for the door. We've in the door. Mrs. Young, good evening. I thought I'd stop by for my final evaluation interview. Oh, I can see that I've picked a bad time. Oh, so this is what you want. Exactly. Mr. and Mrs. American Gothic. It's what I want to be. Ah, yes, perhaps every other Tuesday between 5 and 6 a.m., but anything more than that would bore you into a stupor. There's nothing boring about a peaceful life. There's no intrigue, no drama. No excitement, no fun. Stuart and I have plenty of fun. Hmm, making brownies, potting plants. Folding laundry, shoveling snow. We find <laughs> pleasure in the simplest of things. Well, if the simple life is what you crave, then Stuart is your man. Well, then you're finally catching on. That simplicity doesn't do it for you, Gloria. You think you know me so well, you don't know anything about me. Stuart is the one who has a direct line to my dreams. And of all my dreams, that is what I've needed the most. Yes, I do believe that. Good. What you wish is that these sweet people had been your parents. Oh, don't be stupid. Do you blame you for wanting to trade that narrow-minded harpy of a mother and a milk toast of a father for these wonderful people? They've been your parents. You wouldn't be afraid to grab for what you want now. You're just making this up as you go along. You're too late, Gloria. As sweet as Stuart is, you can't make him your daddy. These people robbed you of your childhood. Don't let them cheat you out of your future. Stuart is giving me a future. The future you deserve is with me. A future with you? Yes. What is that, a couple of trips? Some serious jewelry. A beautiful penthouse far off the beaten track. A bembo with an IQ of 10 wouldn't call that a future. Is that what you think I'm offering you? Oh, give or take a few perks. I would be a well-kept pet, a very expensive diversion. Never. You got that right. Never. I would never give up a home and a husband for a cheap affair with you. You've totally misled me. Oh, yes. I can see. You are so hot for a platonic relationship that I cannot even get you off my trail. Gloria, I want to marry you.
to marry me. Yes, of course I do. When did you decide that? The first time I ever danced with you, the night of the benefit. Oh, so you want to marry me because I can dance? <laughs> no, I want to marry you because you... Because we're magic together in a ballroom, in a boardroom, or a bedroom. You're just trying to get me away from Stuart. <laughs> do you think I would... Do you think I would do all this? You are... You are desirable, Gloria, but there are other desirable women in this world, many of them. No, no, I want to have a life with you. I thought you understood that. Well, I can see that. I can see it. With me, you'll have the security that you crave. And you won't have to hide out in a, in a little gatehouse to find it. You'll never be scared anymore. You'll never have to, to, to shut the world out anymore. So I'd be safe with you. As Mrs. Adam Chandler, you could hold your head up anywhere. You could hold court in your own mansion or be a, a sought-after guest in all of the great houses of the world. Because of you. Because I set you free to be what you are. The perfect society one. No, no, much more than that. You're a woman of compassion. You have a sense of mission. You want to help people with AIDS. Well, why don't you initiate the Gloria Marsh Chandler Institute for AIDS Research and Treatment. Just like that? Just like that. We can launch a new adventure every day and then fall into each other's arms every night. We can, we can do anything we want. We can go anywhere we want. We'll never spend a week in the same place. Imagine dancing in the moonlight on the deck of a yacht with a full orchestra playing anything you like. Just for me. Just for us, the two of us. Happy in our own universe, safe and secure, and never bored. Think about it, Gloria. Look at us. Look at us, husband and wife. The start of a dazzling life. It's right, Gloria. You know it is. You're actually serious about this. We're perfect for each other. We belong together. All you have to do is make a choice. Marry me. What about Stuart? Stuart wants to give you a sanctuary. And I want to lay the whole work to you. Which do you want? This is one of one. I've showed you that, but you obviously have forgotten, so let's try and do it this way, okay? You close your eyes and envision me in a courtroom. All eyes on me as I'm on the witness stand explaining to Judge Carson that the father of the year is trying to seduce his brother's fiance into bed. Yes, you have to believe me. This is not what it looks like. Supposing, for the sake of argument, that what you say is true. You came to the door and quite unexpectedly discovered that the child was here. Yes, that is exactly what happened. And Junior heard Brian and he came running over here because Junior loves Brian and he, he wanted to play with him. But well, what's one supposed to do? Just say no and turn around and walk out? In a word, yes. Instead, you proceeded to violate both the letter and the spirit of the ruling. All right, maybe the letter, but certainly not... Mr. Bodine wasn't barred from visiting hours as a puritanical punishment. He was asked to remove himself to make things simpler for your son. The object was to avoid confusing the child during this difficult time. I really understand that. Apparently, you don't understand. And neither does Mr. Bodine. If you did, you wouldn't have engaged the child in citing him to play. This is ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry you don't understand the ruling. Well, maybe the ruling doesn't make any sense. Unlike you, Brian has human feelings. Unlike you, he can't stand to see a child hurt. What's the matter, Mommy? Hey, baby, come here. Nothing's the matter. Nothing's the matter at all. <laughs> Mrs. Young, allow me to show you to the door. You have no right. I have every right. This is my family. 
the care of this child. Yes, well, for someone supposedly concerned about this child, you certainly don't mind exposing him to a petty bureaucrat. Mrs. Young, you have the sensitivity of a mollusk. Well, I never... No, I don't suppose you ever have. No doubt that's why your face is so pinched. Good night. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, Palmer, I, I don't know. I got a queasy feeling you shouldn't have talked to her quite like that. Opal, I don't think it would have mattered what any of us said or did. I think Mrs. Young had her mind made up the minute I opened. I can't stay here. I gotta get back there. Have to Listen, the doctor and the ahead. nurses know exactly where we are. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about her. She was gone. Didn't you see her face? She died, Edmund, and, 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 and I'm the reason. She got so caught up in me and my problems, her heart stopped. You know, your mother can hear you right now. Guilt is stupid. Plus, it's useless. It's true. I'm the reason. You I was the chief reason that Noel is living right now, okay? She adores you. You're terrific with her. Worry. The problem isn't worry, the problem is her heart. I can't lose my mother, Edmund. I can't. Listen, uh, we gotta just sit this one out, okay? So, uh, why don't we just... Cardiac arrest, but I don't think we're out of the woods. Mm -hmm. These are her readings since the episode? Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin, yes. we have an ICU room ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Easy. Okay. Martin? I'm Ruth Martin, and I'm going to take very good care of you. Only please, don't talk, all right? Just try to relax. Dad's last name was Martin. His, his mom, Ruth, works here too. Dixie? All my children will continue in a moment. We'd rather you didn't speak right now, Mrs. Ossini. You need to get your rest. We're going to be moving you back to ICU in a few minutes. My son. Don't worry about Ted. He's down the hall and he's with his friend. Dixie. You wanted to go. I made you stay. Mrs. Young was right. No, no. I really should be an expert at covering myself right now, but I don't. I just make the same. Stupid mistake over and over and over again. I just like play right into Adam's hands. I mean, guess where Mrs. Young is right now. Just, just take a wild guess. Who cares? She's probably made a beeline to Adam's, or, or she's gone over to the judges. Either way, both of them know by now how I have abused my visitation privileges. Okay, okay. So you'll explain to the judge. <laughs> I've had such luck explaining so far. I've had so much luck and done so well explaining. I'm about to lose my son. No. Don't say that. Don't. You're right. I shouldn't be talking this way in front of Junior. Listen, just call me the minute you take Junior back to Adams. <laughs> back to Adams. Mm -hmm. Story of my life in one sentence. Not forever. 
things are gonna change. For the worst, possibly. I have to tell you, at this moment, I really wish I would have let Uncle Palmer kill him. Dixie, just hang in there. We're gonna win in the end, so just hang in, okay? I'll let you get them. Hello. Dixie, honey, it's Ruth. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news. What now? Well, one of your patients, that Mrs. Orsini, she's had a very serious heart attack. She's asking for you, Dixie. So I was totally psyched to meet this Madame Morsini, larger than life, beloved boss by all. Kind of like an old black and white movie. Yeah, I saw it at 39. Kuka directed it. Ethel Barrymore was the boss. Was it Rosalind Russell? Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, when she showed up, she was something else. Had this wonderful smile and about 900 Christmas presents. I guess you liked her right off the bat. Oh, she made quite an impression. And apparently so did I, because she took one look at me and passed out cold. She didn't say anything before that? Not a word. One of the other pickers said she had a heart condition. And I didn't know what the hell to do, so I picked her up and carried her back to the house. About five minutes later, she was chatting it up, acting like nothing happened, reassuring the maid, dismissing the doctor. And then, uh, listen, you uh, uh, you want me to get you something from the, the kitchen or uh, maybe the bar? You could use a shot. Am of... I keeping you from anything? Oh no, uh, no, Mrs. Rossini, not at all. You're you don't have plans. Or... Christmas family plans? Uh, no, nothing. You're, you're new to the vineyard, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. How long, did you say? About a week. But you're not from the valley. Uh, that, that's right. Because I know most of the families around here. <laughs> Must be nice. Uh, I mean, the, the family, you know, having um, roots and all. What, what about yours? Excuse me? Your roots, your family. Um, where are you from? Uh, around, no, well, uh, no place, really. I, um, Army brat? Uh, no. Uh, would you like a, a nice cup of tea I could uh, ring for the... No, no, nothing. Well, um, in, 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 that, in that case, uh, Mrs. Orsini, uh, would you excuse me? I better get back to form. Oh, no, 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 just a minute. Here at the hospital. You haven't even told me your name. Uh, Joseph. Martin Joseph. Martin Joseph. Hmm. Thought she was going to faint all over again. And then it dawned on me that this sweet, lovable woman might be nothing but one big nut. <laughs> and that uh, it was probably best for both of us if I refrained from further disclosures. So what did you talk about? I told her everything. <laughs> Smooth. Oh. Talk about the memory loss? Everything. I told her I didn't know who I was or where I was from. <laughs> hmm. For some strange reason that I will never be able to identify, I picked this wonderful, eccentric woman to be my first and only confidant. Well, um, <clears throat> there are trees. Lots and lots of trees, you know, like a, like a forest. And, uh, it's, it's getting dark. Ugh. Do you have any idea how old you were? Uh, seven, eight, maybe younger. I, I don't remember. It's hard. I... What were you wearing? Shorts. Do you remember what color they were? Oh, no. No, mostly I keep thinking about my leg. What was the matter with your leg? Well, it's hurt. 
broken, I think. I, I can't tell. I just can't, uh, I can't get up. So I just keep sitting there on this park bench with a stupid look on my face. <laughs> it was a bench. Oh, yeah, yeah, like a park bench. You know, it was a park, only, uh, only bigger. A state park? Yeah. Do you remember how you, how you got out of this park? No, I, I, I don't, I don't remember anything. I don't know who I am, where I come from. And Mrs. Rossini, the name, Martin Joseph, I, I, I I'm sorry, but I just made that up. <laughs> you know, you're the first person I've told this to. For the life of me, I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. Oh, I know how you're telling me all of this. <laughs> you're my son. After two decades, you come back to me. It's a miracle. Oh, you come back to me. You're She said it was a miracle. exactly what it was. Can you see this in your mind? Me in the courtroom, all eyes rivets around me, as I explain in every dirty detail, every part of your seduction scam. Why, Gloria? Jack says that uh, I can swing the judge's favor over to Dixie's side. By degrading yourself in an open court? I can handle a little bit of degradation. Stay out of the courtroom. Oh, you'll do what? I'm not afraid of you. As a matter of fact, one of the French benefits of my going to court is making you mad enough to leave me alone. Don't do this. Are you threatening me? You must have me confused with someone else. I'm not one of your kids or your ex-wives. You can't terrorize me like you do, Dixie. Don't leave Dixie out of this. Think of your own best interests. You can't bully me into submission. I'm not like poor Haley. You can't wreck my life. You don't have the power, but you know what? After I explain the truth, you won't have the power to wreck Junior's either. You'll only hurt yourself. I have no self-respect to lose. I let you maul me in the boathouse. I let you use my wedding plans as an excuse to keep your hands on me. You wanted me as much as I wanted you. I should have stopped you a long time ago, and I didn't. I'm ashamed of that, but not shamed enough to back down. I'm going to stop you, Adam. I'm the only one who can. Well, if you testify against me, my lawyer will have no choice but to brand you as a lying, manipulative slut. My lawyer made Dixie look like a nymphomaniacal half-wit. Think how she'll make you look. Dixie will look better by comparison, yes. Next to you, she looks like a Sunday school teacher. Five minutes ago, you were proposing to me, and now you're threatening to rip my life apart? I still want to marry you. But if you're going to discredit me in court, you have to expect to be branded a self-serving tramp. So you want a self-serving tramp as the next Miss Adam Chandler? Yes, I don't give a damn about your history. My proposal still stands. Why don't you accept it so we can end this unfortunate discussion? You are completely out of your sick mind. No, 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 no. I'm totally rational. But I never flinch. Stuart, on the other hand, is a very sensitive soul. Think how this testimony will hurt him. Stuart knows how treacherous you can be. And once he finds out what you've been doing, he'll be hurt, yes. The shock will come when he realizes how much trouble you had resisting me. Well, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to know. Gloria, are you forgetting they make you put your hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth? Now, you've come a long way from your mother's Sunday school class, but can you put your hand on the good book and lie? You rotten hypocrite. Imagine the look on Stuart's face when you testify that you want his brother. Like you really care about Stuart. Five minutes ago, you were just proposing to his fiance. Gloria, the sad part is Stuart's going to be hurt. Sooner or later, wouldn't it be better to do it now than to wait till after the wedding to find out how you feel about me? I hate your guts. You want me so much, you're about to explode with it. You can't wait. You can't last much longer. Isn't it better to jilt Stuart at the altar than to cheat on him later with his own twin brother? I would never cheat on Stuart. You're not going to be able to help yourself, Gloria. 
Because I'm going to keep coming closer and closer. Until one day you reach out. Oh. Hey, whoa, whoa, let me do that for you. We had a miracle then. We need a miracle now. I can't stop thinking about that monitor, about that flat line. This Listen, don't think, think about it, okay? Don't think, just talk, okay? Ted, Ted, talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me more about the first day you met Nola, okay? I want to hear it. Come on. Well, she just told me about a little boy. Yeah? You know, same hair, same eyes, same age. She even showed me a picture of a little kid on a bicycle with curly hair and two front teeth missing. That was a major clue. Age and appearance. Yeah, and the name. Her husband's name was Joseph. And then there was a, a weird flash of me remembering that I'd been lost, disappearing at roughly the same age. And, and, and on top of that, there was this feeling that I had that California wasn't new to me. And I'd been there before, even lived there. So the pieces started to click together. Yeah. For no other. Proof was positive. But not for you. I got convinced. Yeah. But not by the proof. By the lady. I hate Ken. Oh, come on. You know, you learn to love it all over again. If you could just find that nine of hearts. Shouldn't we play something else? Sure. As soon as we finish this hand, we'll go back to playing two-handed whist. Is there such a thing as three-handed whist? Har de har har. So, who did you invite for dinner tonight, Mama? No one. Mother? Oh, I did ask Carrie Elwood to stop by and Imagine pick up some that. papers for her father. Mm -hmm. Well, she... She's coming around 7, and it would be polite to ask her for dinner. Terrific. I mean, nothing fancy. We could throw some steaks on the grill and open a 77 Cabernet. Mm-hmm. Gin. Well, what do you think? I think I'm a hell of a gin player. No, I mean by Carrie Elwood and I never dinner. played her. I think it's terrific, Mother. Honestly, you'll have somebody to play with when I go into town. No, you will not. Yes, I will. Carrie is the prettiest girl in oh. Napa Valley, oh. with enough sense not to be conned by your charm. You could do a lot worse than Carrie Elwood. Speaking of conning people, you should be ashamed of yourself trying to con me like that. It's disgraceful. You didn't let me count up your hand either. No. You're cheating. I want this deck. <clears throat> We're going to cut for a high card. High card takes all. What are you talking about? <clears throat> if I win, you're going to stay for dinner. If you win, I will never fix you up again as long as I live. Do you promise? You promise. You uh -huh. swear. Uh -huh. Deal. Okay. What is that? Oh, what no. is that? Give it's me that. It's nothing. What is that? It's nothing. What is that? A jack of hearts. No, 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 don't, no. no. You're in the edge. Don't take all me. Don't do all of that. Don't do all of that. I love her so much. No one could ever ask for a better mother. Dixie? Are you there? Poor Mrs. Orsini. She was doing so well. I mean, I was, I was just talking about her son. Uh, honey, can you come over? I, I think it would mean a great deal to her. Is she going to make it? I wish I could say yes, but I, I'm honestly not sure. Could you get here reasonably soon? Well, listen, I was, um, I was going to go to Adams to drop off Junior. I suppose that would, that would be good for me to have someplace to go after. So we can expect to see you then? As soon as I drop off Junior. Would you rather I kick it from here to the front door? Be my guest. 
All the better to drag you up on charges. Fat chance. Brian, either throw him through the door or out of the window. Now, that is my request. I will say au revoir. Next time we meet, it'll be on my turf. They call it family court. Scum. That's what you are. You don't even care what you're doing to your own son. I care enough to save him from you and your destructive mistress. Get out. You know, Junior is thrilled to be back at his mother's place, even for a few measly hours. You know that? Your measly hours are more than enough for, with a woman who can't say no. Oh, yeah, well, that's one thing you know how to do with your kids. Say no. No, you can't see your mother. No, you can't choose your own friends. No, you can't grow up a regular kid. You have to grow up to be a Chandler. Preferable to being raised a Bodine, isn't it? How is your dad? Seen him lately? Oh, you know what your son said to me today? You know what he said? He said, why can't we play soccer anymore? I mean, what, no soccer at your house, Adam? It's the kid's favorite sport. What's the problem? Maybe too old? Huh? Maybe too tired, busy, stupid? You saw my son today? Yeah, yeah, I was old. You'll hear all about it. Yeah. Talk about stuff. Get ready, get all your stuff packed up, go back to Daddy's. No. Hey, listen, I got an idea. Why don't we, let's have a race and we'll just see who can pick up the most toys while I can't attend. Yeah, count that? me in, let's okay, go. Okay, ready? One, two, oh, I got this one. Three, four. No. Sweetie, you have to go back to Daddy's. Dad, you can see mother now. Mrs. Orsini, your son is on his way. Dixie? I spoke to Dixie, and she's coming too. 